Audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. Jesus said, if you hold to my teachings, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Pain and death came to planet Earth when man began to esteem himself more highly than he ought to do. There were two different trees about which we read in the Garden of Eden. It was the tree of life, which represented dependence upon God. Man would continue to enjoy life by believing God, trusting Him and obeying Him. Then there was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The fruit of this tree was forbidden. It represented independence from God. Satan's aim in tempting man to eat of the fruit of this tree was to remove God from his life and replace him with self. Man would then become a self-made God. There's only one problem with me being God, and that is that I don't have the attributes for the role. I'm not self-existent. My Creator gave me my life. He brought me into this world. It was not my doing. Neither am I self-sufficient. I cannot sustain my life. I don't have the resources to do so. I wasn't made to be independent, but dependent. Isn't it amazing that when we live God-dependent lives, we enter into the rest that Jesus promised us. This is Set Free with Ken Legg. And hello and welcome. Phil is my name and with me is author and pastor Ken Legg. And we're talking about walking in the Spirit this week. Now yesterday we shared that some of the apostles had a unique way of instructing Christians how to live. They never exhorted them to behave in a certain way without first teaching them or reminding them of their identity in Christ. They first said, this is who you are, and then they said, now go and be those people. Walk worthy of who you are. And it's the way we should do it, isn't it, Ken? Yeah, that's right. Now, I I want to follow on from there today, actually, Phil, and uh, talk about something else that they taught, and that is this. Uh, Well, let's say this. They never taught us to produce something, but rather that we had received something. Uh, legalism teaches us to manufacture certain behavioural works. But in contrast to that, in Christ we've been given something. We've been given life. Uh, I love this old prayer that Augustine once prayed. He said, Lord, give what you demand, then demand what you will. Give you what think, you demand and then, then demand, demand what, what you, you will. will. In other words, okay, um, if you're going to ask us to be something or to do something, give us that. Give us that capacity. Mm. Give us that empowerment. And then it doesn't matter what you ask of us because you've empowered us to be those people mm. you're asking us Good. to be. Um, I, I, I try to illustrate it this way. The difference between a Christmas tree and a fruit tree. What's the difference? Well, a Christmas tree can't produce anything, so we have to put things on it. We decorate it with baubles and you know presents and you know shiny stuff. Uh, why is that? Because it's never going to produce anything. Why? Because it's dead. Whereas a fruit mm. tree uh, produces life from within. And and of course, we are branches abiding in the vine. Um, it's the vine that produces the fruit. We don't produce it. Uh, we cannot produce it. We just bear it by, by virtue of the fact that we're abiding in the vine. Uh, let's put it another way, Phil. Um, Paul says this. He says, work out your own salvation because it's God who works in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. So everything that God wants to be worked out of our lives you know, in our practical everyday living, he has first worked in us mm. by the power of his spirit. And I guess when you really think that through, there's going to be just this amazing freedom from striving that, you know, we can experience when we realize that we can't produce the Christian life. It's something given to us. It's his life. It's not ours. Yeah. In fact, Peter says this, um, Phil, he says, uh, his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. So, Everything that we need to live a godly, successful, fruitful life, he has already given it to us. Um, Everything we need, if you like, lives inside us. Paul put it this way. He says, put on the new man, which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. I love that. He says, put this on. It's like like if I was to give you a coat and say, put that on. You know, you're cold maybe, put that on. Mm. So I'm giving you something. And and, and God has given us the Christian life Mm. uh, in the person of his son. Everything that we need, it's not something we've got to manufacture. It's something that's been imparted to us already by the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay, easy to say, but let's have a practical example of that. All right, well, I'll take my own life. Okay, now, uh, I won't take my life. <laughs> I'll, take <laughs> me, I'll take me as an example is what I meant to say. <laughs> let's look at um, one of my um, fleshly weaknesses is 
a lack of patience. Now, you, if you get me in a car behind a truck uh, that I can't <laughs> overtake, you know, I, the steam is coming out of my ears. Okay, that's me. Because in my flesh dwells no good thing. So that will never change. That aspect of my flesh will never change. Um, God doesn't have a program of reforming the flesh. Uh, so therefore, I'll always be like that. But what he's given me is the Spirit. Now, the fruit of the Spirit is patience. So he doesn't want me to produce patience from the flesh. I can't. I'm an impatient person. But what he has given me is the life of the Spirit. Mm. And he says, now, that life is in you. Work out what I have given to you. How? By faith in Jesus. Mm. I guess it's the difference between thinking pragmatically uh, or organically. It's more kind of thinking organically, isn't it? That's right. The, the Christian life is life. It's that. It's exactly that. It's organic. So much preaching today, when you listen to it on holiness, is more preaching about the fruits of holiness rather than the root of holiness. The fruit is what we should be like, what we should be doing, how we should live. Now, Paul actually taught the root of holiness before he exhorted his hearers to you know, live according to the fruit of holiness. Mm. So the root is what determines the fruit. Um, Let me give you an example. Paul says, As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith. So Christ is the root of the Christian life. He's the root of our holiness. So if we preach fruit without root, what are we going to end up with? Artificial fruit. (laughs) <laughs> coming back to this whole thing of the Christmas tree, mm. we're going to try and put things on our lives um, externally. You ever picked up one of those plastic apples thinking it was real and then got disappointed? <laughs> You've been caught out some, on that, well, Some of them look really, yeah. really real. but Yeah. You remember Jesus told the parable about the seed that fell in different places and there was that which fell among the, was it the rocky ground, the stony ground? Yeah. And it seemed to produce, but it came to nothing. Why is that? Because it had no root. Now, that's what... Jesus is talking about. If we're not rooted in him, we can't produce fruit. doesn't matter what it looks like. you know. In, in From the outside, it's not going to be real fruit unless it's rooted properly in him. Yeah. I guess the attempted at bearing fruit without the root brings us back to something we've already talked about, and that yeah. is the flesh not only wants us to do bad things, but also to try to do good things out of our own resources, you know, independent from God. And that's the Christmas tree versus the fruit tree thing again. Yeah, we, what we've said uh, throughout this week, Phil, is that every Christian is capable of living two different kinds of life, according to the flesh or according to the spirit. Now, the thing is, of course, that only one life can be lived at any one given moment. Either the flesh or the spirit life will be evident. So if we esteem self, okay, if we defend self, if we exert self, if we assert self, trust in self, boast in self, what life is going to flow forth from us? Well, of course, it will be the self-life. But if we deny self and walk by faith in the Son of God, in other words, have no confidence in ourselves, but Mm -hmm. all our confidence is in Christ living in us, then it's going to be his life that's going to flow out of us. And that's why every day, you know, Jesus said, take up your cross and follow me. Um, What does that really mean? Well, our cross is God's reminder to us of his verdict on the self-life and of our co-crucifixion with him, if you like. Okay, we've been crucified with Christ. So that cross is a reminder. It's not about me. It's not about what I can produce, what I can do. I know that I have died with Christ, but hey, in place of that, I've been given newness of life, his life. Wow, look at the potential. I can do all things. I can be those, I can bear those fruits that I couldn't bear in the flesh. I can be patient. I can be holy. I can be pure. I can be uh, victorious. I can be uh, full of joy. I can be full of love. Not because I have these in the flesh, but because Christ lives in me Mm. and the life that I now live, I walk by faith in Christ. And, you know, all things are possible to those who will believe. You know, through me, he says, you can do all things. Helpful advice on walking in the Spirit this week, and we continue our conversation same time tomorrow. Do join us. Until then, remember you don't have to carry that baggage. God wants you to be set free. For books, DVDs, small group studies, and other resources from Ken Legg and details about Ken's ministry, shop online at vision.org.au. That's vision.org.au. 
Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au. 